Okay, so this is the first question. Not on the Padlet. We will do it verbally today. I will. You are allowed to unmute your mic. The first thing is, why do you think the author choose to write this novel not only in the second person, but also in the form of a self-help book? What effect did these choices have on your experience as a reader? Let's ignore the last one. Let's talk about the first four, four part of the question. Why do you think he chose to write this novel in the second person and as a self-help book? Yes, Atazaz, you are very correct. This narrative of you is to involve his audience. This is why he has used it. So that everyone reading the novel can identify him or herself with the character. This is the sole reason. It is very rare to write and it's very difficult to write it. Eska, you are very correct. It is very rare and he has done an amazing job there. An amazing, amazing job. If you ask me, I have never seen anybody writing this second person narrative in such a forceful manner. And literally I was like, every time he says you, it, it feels like that he's pointing finger at you. It feels like that you are the person who is going through all of this stuff. So it makes it more sensible, sensitizing, not sensible. It makes it more sensitive. It makes it more relatable. It makes the people understand better the situation of a person who is going through all this ordeal. Very correct answer. What about using the self, the, the form of self-help book? Why do you think he has used this self-help book? It looks like that you, when you read the title, it looks like it's a self-help book. It'll help you to become filthy rich. And then when you read the chapters, the titles and the beginning passages of this book are like, you are reading a self-help book. Who is telling you how to become rich? Saying, all right. Okay, let me answer this one. See, self-help books. He has used this self-help book thing to mock it. What is a better way to mock a self-help book than to write a self-help book. If you are trying to criticize something, you also, you always do parody. Don't you? You are somewhat, you see, in your farewells, remember your school farewells, uh, when you people used to do your farewells, there were some always imitators who used to do parodies of your teacher. So if you are trying to criticize your teachers, you can also do that. So whenever you are trying to criticize something, you do a parody of that you make fun of it. This is why this form of self-work is the best way to mock self-help book. He has written this to mock these books. And what is a better way to do it than writing a self-help book of your own? Which is quite opposite to a self-help book. It looks like a self-help book, but it is quite opposite. You think that you will learn how to get filthy rich in rising Asia, but in the end you learn not to become rich on expense of something which is so important that if you lose it, it will never come back. Exactly. This is what he is doing with the self-help narrative. Okay. The self-help book form is to criticize the self-help genre. No, he's not talking about the, pro he's, he's not telling you that, that this are, these are the problems you should avoid. He's telling you if you decide on this path of getting filthy rich, this is what you get. It is telling you the book is in a self-help book. You always get uh, all the positive sides of becoming rich. If you get rich, you will get this Lamborghini, uh, this home, that home, Rolex watches, this brand, that brand. In a self-help book, you always get the positive picture of getting rich. This self-help book, although it's very ironic, it's very satirical. It gives you the real picture. It tells you what a self-help book never tells you that you will become this your life will become this your situation will be this this is why this book is very different from other self-help books yes we can say that somehow yes he is depicting the reality of self-help genre self-help books and entrepreneurships that's very correct let's move on to the next question what do you think is the is the main theme of this novel what did you learn from this?
Michelle, very good. Yes. Do not forget to live before you die. That's exactly what this novel is telling you. Life is not about money only. It's about many more things. Salma, it is not telling you to leave memories and relatives. It is telling you to hold on to them. Mocking, criticizing what? Yes, Faiza, yes, we can say that. You cannot uh, buy everything from through money. Make money, but do not get filthy rich. Yes, money can buy happiness. Money can buy, happiness can buy money. Okay, money can buy happiness, yes. Okay, criticizing self-help genre. So the main theme is, again, you know, write it in a better word that do not fall prey for money scams maybe do not fall prey to the pretty trails of money you are all very correct the major theme is this you lose everything in the rise of becoming filthy rich not rich, rich am I saying rich? I said rich I am not saying rich rich, filthy rich okay yes that's gone. yes it's not rich Exactly. Do not choose the paths where, where you will lose everything. Just getting filthy rich and rising Asia is the path where you will lose everything. This money, this all this stuff. It's okay, it's okay. Exactly. You cannot sustain happiness with money. That's for sure. That is a theme. That is a theme for sure. Wealth is not a cause of destruction. Your obsession with it is a cause of destruction this is a very good uh, thank you so much for pointing it out Devi Sharbanu. the problem with our society is see the word filthy rich you have to understand this he is not saying that how to get rich rising Asia getting rich through fine means is okay it's fine everybody deserves a good and better life everybody deserves a better education better health care better living standards everything but getting filthy rich should not be your goal. Filthy rich means that you forget everything. You forget what is important there in your life. You are just running after money. You are obsessed with it. Your obsession with money is what is going to get you nowhere. Yes, Samra. Yes. Obsession is not the way to life. This is not a way. Making your life better, dreaming big for your family is not bad. It's ambitious. Ambition is good. Over ambition is not, not good at all. Have you read this play, Dr. Faustus? We have our Dr. Faustus here. See, we have our Dr. Faustus. He was very ambitious. And what happened in the end? He lost everything. Although he was ambitious in different situation, his ambition was different. His ambition was about knowledge, that kind of power. But this ambition, his ambition was really, really material, money. But both of them had a single flaw, same flaw. What kind of flaw? They were both over ambitious. They are both, we have our Dr. Faustus here. Yes, exactly. Tragic ending, exactly, exactly. I, I thought this was a tragic ending for me too because everybody else gets to live on his money and he dies penniless. Even his hospital bills are paid by another person. What is the point of earning so much if you cannot even support yourself when you are old? And you need people to protect you from other people. You need people to help you to get through this. We are going to discuss this book in Human Beings. How we connect to this as a Pakistani, as a person, as a Muslim, and what it teaches us in life. What lessons can we learn from this book? What are the things which you should be focusing on when you are reading such kind of literature? So as human beings, we are going to make sense of these books, not as literature students. Literature students will be looking at it from a very, very objective point of view but from being objective rather than being objective, 
I would like all of you to be a bit personal here. Relate this, these conditions to yourself and try to find a way to understand this in, in a personal manner so that you can internalize the lessons here which are being taught to you. Shall we start? How does the transition from rural to urban life affect the family? What challenges does this elevate for them, both individually and as a unit? And what new challenges does it create? Not more, it can be very difficult for students to answer these kind of questions when, when you are strictly asking them to answer the questions in the novel's narrative. I am asking you as a person, what if your family to be moved from the rural areas, some, some of you, most of you, most of you people are from villages, living in hostels, you people are here in Hyderabad or in Jamshura because you study. Right now you might be in your villages. So as a person, if your family is to migrate, your family is to move from your villages to city, what kind of problems will you leave behind? And what kind of changes will come in your life? Now let's try to connect all of your responses to the people in this novel. The you, the protagonist, the person who is going through all of this stuff. What happens uh, in the novel is this. When they are in the village, the protagonist is suffering from hepatitis E, number one thing. In villages and rural areas, and in the novel, the author actually mentioned in the novel that the protagonist's mother has been through these diseases, these, these kind of diseases, hepatitis E, hepatitis C, B, joiners, and all kinds of diseases so many times. So what is one particular thing about living in a rural area, rural area is having no medical facility, facilities at all. Although you, have, uh, you don't have to spend much, but you do not have any medical facilities. So the mortality rate there is very, very high. You do not have virtually no, you don't have no educational institutes no educational uh, opportunities in the rural life so this is what was happening with these family too they had no medical support they were living in a very extended family where they had a feud where the mother of the protagonist had a continual feud with her mother-in-law where there were not even bathrooms to go to you had to go outside in the fields so you have no basic life needs of a person who wants to live a sophisticated life and because of no sanitary no proper sanitary facilities people often get sick this is what happened there in the novel too uh, this protagonist family is sick often because they do not have any uh, medical facilities or sanitary facilities that's one thing. The other thing was they were living hand to mouth. There were no um, educational facilities or the opportunities to move forward. Yes, people, all of your opinion, I can read them. So this is what the family was going through in rural life. But when they moved to the city, one challenge that was elevated is that they got electricity they at least have some kind of access to education and uh, the elder siblings of the protagonist his elder sister and his elder brother managed to get some work and that somehow increased their per capita family income and they actually had a chance to be successful in life. So what kind of problems were elevated that they got the opportunity to get education. They had access to some running water, bathrooms, the particular, uh, the fundamental facilities every human being he loves or needs. And then they had somewhat exposure of a city where there were opportunities to grow these kind of problems were solved. What problems were created when they got into city were that uh, one thing, 
that they were exposed to even bigger diseases that they were exposed to even bigger challenges that they were exposed to the competition that they never ever experienced while they were living in a village so these kind of challenges were created when they moved from the rural life to the urban one am i making myself is it clear people as as you, you are correct you are correct there and this is what this this can be deemed as one of the challenge these people his family was facing while they were in rural area you could see some passion between their parents you could see some love there between the parents but as soon as they moved to uh, the city they are all consumed by one desire and that's it earning money we do not see the the protagonist bonding much with his parents or his younger brothers and sibling and yes it can be one yes fazila yes the superficiality thing is very correct yes exactly yes amra very good it does become very mechanical in cities so but it 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 does sell uh, if if i am in a city if i think of my friends or or my colleagues or the people who touch in my life living in the rural area when I, mean, i listen to their problems no schools uh, no proper roads no electricity no gas sewage gas i'm talking about that no basic needs no clean water and when i look at my life in a city so these things are relatively easy to get by they are relatively easy to acquire if you are talking about in the terms of money water electricity opportunities all these kind of things so they are relatively i'm not saying that they're easier in a city they're relatively easy and especially in asia where where the poverty is a defining factor in our societies where the poverty is the defining factor of our societies in our societies it's so very important to address these issues that whether city life is good or not 